Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. In this episode we're going to take a look at investigating HTTP errors with Wireshark. Specifically one HTTP error that is not really an error. This will be interesting. So let's take a look at what started all this. I was on a uh, Linksys Cisco technical support page and the page returned the common page not found message. But it just didn't look right. I've seen this a lot at some customer sites and I've never had the time to look into it. So you know what? I'm on my time. Why not look into it? Um, it's kind of important to understand that when we see page not found, we probably should see some reference to the HTTP error 404 when we see that. In this case, we don't. It could just simply be suppressed. But you know what? Let's take a better look and find out. As we do with all troubleshooting, I always tell people we should have a proper baseline. In this case, I'll hit my web server here in the lab, Homer, and I'll mistype the index page and I'll type INDX and leave out the E just so I can force the error and see what it would really look like. And as you can see on the actual web page itself, it says HTTP 404 not found, just as I thought. And even on the tab here, it says HTTP 404 not found. Within the actual trace, if I do follow the stream within Wireshark, I see my get in red, and I can see the blue, or I guess purple is a better way to say it. I'll see the response here, HTTP 1.1404 not found. So this is a true error. This is a real 404 error, as we can evidence from the actual web page itself and from the trace. The reason why the 404 error is a big deal for me is if I was to use uh, the packet counter report within the Wireshark statistics menu, you can see it'll actually tell me 404 client error and it'll tell you how many errors they have or how many redirects. So these codes are actually quite important depending on the reporting that I intend to do. If I used another program such as Tamper Data, uh, you'll also see the same thing. It'll say get and then the status 404. So I need these real error codes to tell people when things really don't work. Um, I suspect in this case it's not a true 404 error message and it's probably um, some server default or coded within a page. So we're going to take a look at that and see if that's true. So now that I'm armed with my baseline and I know what a 404 error looks like and I've also got my tools identifying 404s, I'm going to go back to that web page, that Linksys Cisco support page. So I've loaded the page, and obviously I'm not going to show you that, and I've captured those packets. So now I can analyze those packets. And the first thing we do is we use the find packet feature within Wireshark, control F. And the important thing to do uh, or note with this particular dialog box is the string. We're searching for a string. The default is typically going to be your display filter. That's the radio button there. That's what's highlighted or selected by default. You want to make sure you click on string and you can type page not found. Uh, the nice thing about that is the default is not case sensitive. See there's your case sensitive down here so it's not checked off. So you don't really have to pay attention to the case in this point and that's nice because sometimes we don't know the case. We're not sure about the case. After you hit find we can find our packet or single packet and from there you can right click on that single packet and then choose follow the TCP stream and by doing so it will extract um, all of the packets for that single TCP stream or connection. Let's see what that looks like. So now that we've uh, followed the stream, you get an additional dialog box that comes up and this is uh, all the data, all the payload of all of those packets that we've just filtered on. And we're going to search within this stream for the same error message. In this particular example we got to be careful because when we do our find we need to pay attention to the case. There is no case sensitive option here. So we've got to make sure you type exactly what you want. So we're going to hit the find button and we're going to dig through these packets or the payload in this case and we're going to see what it comes up with. So quick review. We found our packet. From there we right clicked and followed the stream and when you follow the stream it gives you basically it creates a display filter for those two IPs and those two TCP port numbers creates uh, that filter applies it and now we end up with this additional dialog box that shows us the payload or all the data associated with all those packets as I go through it I use the find 
feature just so I can find the stuff a little quicker and I'm looking for page not found. So as I do that I can see that the top right here it says get and it shows me the path and it's actually loading a web page called 404 error. So that's kind of curious and then I can see when I call that error page it works it's okay. So this is not a legitimate error. This page was not legitimately not found. What happened was I went looking for the page. There's something wrong with the server. It can't find the page and within its default it knows to go and give me this web page, this HTML page called 404 error. So this is kind of interesting how now as we move forward with web troubleshooting not only do we have to keep track of the typical HTTP codes but now we have to pay attention to certain uh, HTML or URL uh, that is given back to the browser when an error occurs. So this is again this is not a legitimate error. This says that it's found but yet again it looks like a 404 error. Again it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Thanks for watching Investigating HTTP Errors with Wireshark. Have a good day. Bye for now.